Hello, welcome to my series about all Chopin's music. Today I have a very special piece for you. Barcarolle in F sharp major, opus 60. I must say that for me um, this episode is uh, extremely demanding and difficult. Uh, as today we have in front of us a piece of music that in fact describes a very um, erotic love scene in the secret gondola in Venice. I think it was p the pianist Karl Tausig who first um, dared to say um, that this piece is this kind of love scene and of course we can think what we want uh, we can only our imagination can stop us uh, and this is beautiful in the music because uh, we don't have to use words but we can just listen absorb and we can see or feel or imagine whatever we want uh, and we will never really be sure what exactly Chopin was thinking uh, while composing it first of all we don't even know where he got the inspiration from he was never in Venice he, so he could never really see in his eyes uh, the, the gondola he didn't really know Italy he only knew a little bit of Genoa but uh, I probably all he remembered was a huge storm on the sea uh, so I think he was he didn't have very good memories well of course he enjoyed a little bit of Genoa and an Italian um, Italian atmosphere you know but uh, in the letters we don't really know Chopin saying a lot of fantastic words about Italy or anything like this um, so who told him to write Barcarolle we don't know we know that he gave his pupils uh, some of Mendelssohn's uh, Lieder ohne Volte so uh, songs without words song without words and so one of them um, is a Barcarolle uh, a song in the boat and of course the Barcarolle had before Chopin a quite long history so it was nothing new for him he didn't create the genre he just decided to write a piece why not another nocturnal well we don't know was he uh, dreaming about something or or just like a poet because he was a poet he was creating poetry uh, with the sound I love to call it like this as a poet he just wrote an erotic erotic uh, poem a poem about love it can be erotic it doesn't have to be erotic whatever you want um, for me personally as a pianist uh, this piece um, is very intimate extremely poetic intimate and greatly written it was criticized by some of musicologists and composers first of all um, the critic was that the second theme and third theme are not um, uh, contrasting enough um, against the first theme but I personally think that this is exactly the idea of this piece that Chopin really wanted it like this he didn't want any contrast throughout the piece uh, so I let me start from the beginning and how this magic piece of music begins well it begins as if we are in the theater and the stage is closed we are sitting maybe opera theater we are sitting and waiting for it to start the play the play to start then finally the time is on and the stage is slowly 
opening or maybe going from down to up you know or like like this very very slowly this is how Chopin wrote it Our feelings is like you know what we feel is what we see what did we what did we see we saw the Venice Venice the gondola and the couple couple probably hidden inside the gondola and the man with you know with this uh, I don't know the English word a sword or what is this I don't know but the the we see and it's so beautiful we even can feel the the atmosphere uh, the the smell of italian coffee the we the the nice temperature warm everything is so beautiful a lot of flowers so romantic this is the essence of romantic maybe it's an evening maybe we see stars and the moon it we should create well when i play this piece when i'm on the pianist i have to work very hard with my imagination i have to become as romantic as possibly i can so that my listeners also can come into this world so again let's start we let's see why this is evening because we start from, from the bass. this part of the keyboard always reminds us and describes dark colors so it's the evening this is the evening and this is the couple that we see <gasps> the first chord already creates us this <gasps> wow this is so beautiful this chord is very beautiful if this note would i would play here we have we doesn't have a nice sound but look this we have so much space in the key and there we have the beauty and then the story the scene love scene starts and now let me focus mostly on pianistic and the, well the musical aspects and think without going very deeply into the imagination uh, although sometimes uh, it's very hard so uh, forgive me if i if i will um, but this beginning is such a fantastically described boat on the water it cannot be better this waving movements of the boat in the water and in fact this movement is itself very erotic so that's why we have this love scene here which you will see the proof when the melody starts but how Chopin did it and what how is it is different from the Berses written for a baby to fall asleep Berses so the lullaby was left right and here how we have the difference is the rhythm and i think you if you are sensitive enough you can feel that this movement of the boat is um accelerating a bit we have tiam pam pam yatatam pam yam pam pam yatatam pam so in like like in the water in the the boat one way is a little slower one way is a little faster how long chopin had to look at these boats in the in the sea or water to perfectly to describe it with music as perfectly as he did this is insane this is so genius so 
I love to play this all the time, like an obsession, with my eyes closed and imagining the boat. And this accompaniment, we feel, we see the boat. This is first that we see beautiful boat, and then what we what we hear. We hear the first melody, the first theme. In thirds, thirds means two notes, and they are perfectly together. What I mean is that when the upper voice goes down, the lower voice also goes down. When the upper voice goes up, the lower also goes up. They agree. So it's a symbol of love. It's a symbol of perfect love without fighting, without quarreling. Just the symbol of two people deeply in love with each other. Maybe maybe first love, maybe, maybe first month of love, I don't know. Uh, but very, very romantic. And the melody, maybe melody is a little bit strange, it's a little bit difficult, but it also has a meaning, because from the very first moment we immediately can feel that we actually are witnesses of a very intimate love scene. So, why? Because at the beginning we have... Already we have the minor second, which no, is not normal in a beautiful Italian song. And after that, we have something also very strange, like jumps up, down, up, down. Up, down, up, down, up, down. So you see, we feel these waves. We, we our subconscious uh, can um, can s can s hear and feel the movement all the time movement of two people. So let's listen to this first theme now and let's observe two things. How this melody is built that we hear the movement of two people all the time but in perfect um, in perfect uh, coordination I would say because they are always together and the left hand all the time the boat And now, well, this for me, it, I mean, this is very important motif. Ta 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 ta. Listen, it will appear many times in this piece, especially at the end. That's why I believe it's extremely important because usually what comes in the end is important. For me. Uh, I can't stop thinking about this as a kind of sh shivering, you know, a little, a little shivering, but shivering from something very positive, something very pleasant, um, a very pleasant moment here, definitely. So let's analyze this melody. As I said, the melody, first phrase, like in the poetry, like in the poem. First uh, sentence and then the second. They are perfectly together. 
sitting and looking at each other's eyes. And now something uh, Chopin is adding something because now the man is say is doing something or saying something um, that she is not. So. And she is doing something that he is not. A little maybe provoking. And from this provoking we start that we have this. This Chopin used many times. He used it in ballad number two. This is the feeling of wa of waves. Tam, ta, tam, ta. And here we have the same thing exactly. is reaching the first climax because he is not really following her and then together again shivering and then you got well maybe goosebumps let's call it goosebumps The story continues. And again, shivering. And then from here we will have like two waves of pleasure, I would say. Two waves. We go up just to go down a little bit. And then up and then go down. Just listen. And again. And again, shivering. Chopin really liked this motif of seven notes. to the A A1 so the first theme again but with a little bit of variation just listen how beautifully and from here we will start growing to another climax, but then this climax will be, it will be very misleading. It will be extremely interesting because this is like, we want to reach the climax, and but Chopin, instead of reaching the climax, he goes more and more and more and more and more quiet. So, you know, it's like playing, uh, he's playing with us, or the, the couple is playing with each other, that just, they don't want to reach the climax yet, they instead, but the, the music goes up, but the dynamic goes down. Let's listen to this building the, the tension. <laughs> And this is the end of the whole part A. So in part A we have so many fantastic details. We have this, the stage open, being open. Then we have the left hand as a gondola. Then we have two people singing. Uh, or looking at each other or touching each other 
uh, talking to each other, singing together, then he's singing something, then she's um, answering him, then they have this ple pleasant shivering all over the body, we have some waves, then we reach two times, like two waves, we reach two times, the little climax go back, reach, little climax goes back, then we have the first theme again, but the second time with the uh, building the climax, which never really appears, uh, because instead of reaching the climax, we go back, because we go back just to have a bigger climax later. So that's how this is built. And now listen to the whole first theme again. have a bridge to the second theme. The bridge is it is played only with one voice. And from here the second theme starts. The second theme starts and the second theme is probably the most the most erotic and the most um, how to say uh, re inspiring for imagination of all three in my opinion at least but let's see this strange bridge this is like a line atmosphere is a little mysterious, sad. It's as if maybe the, the gondola is going to some direction. 
maybe in more hidden place. The more hidden, intimate place, which will be the witness of the second part of the scene. And now, as I say, here the second scene in A major, uh, so the, the very bright key, um, is um, very intimate, um, be, especially when it's well played by the pianist. Well, when the pianist respect what Chopin wrote in the left hand, because this is all the role is in the pianist now, in the pianist's hand. We have a little slurs in the left hand, which um, makes the left hand place the, the little slurs upbeat, which means before the main beat. And what does it really mean for us? It means, well, just listen, just listen. And if you know what I'm talking about, you probably will know what I want to say. This waves, well, if it's badly played, so not like Chopin wrote, this is played like this. It's still nice music, but it's missing. Something is missing. Something. Well, if we play this slurs, which means the accent in the upbeat, just listen. Para, para. Isn't it fantastic? I mean, it can't be uh, described better by, with the music. Taram, taram, but it's hard to play. And uh, this is the accompaniment. And what we see, we see the two persons in a love scene. She, she is saying, and he is answering and then we have something which is this can be like water like a water or can be some kind of wave something connected with this pleasure that we are witnesses of and then it let's i play it for you because this is the general idea of this beautiful second theme and after uh, the first time the second theme grows and we will hear it in full power so very passionate very very passionate um, and this will bring us to the team number three because this barcarol has three teams a b and c let's listen to the whole team number two
Yes, and we have the <coughs> team number three, Poco Piumoso, which means a little faster. And I think this melody is the melody that we actually want to sing, the most Italian melody of all the three. And uh, it's a kind of celebration of all the positive and pleasant things uh, that happened before, in, in my opinion. This is written in three voices when we have the octave. So they are singing in octave and in the middle there is a, 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 the third, well it's not the third person really because we still have couple probably, but there is a, something that is enriching these two uh, people. And still in the left hand we have the waves and it will bring us to the most magic moment in this story. Just listen. Very waving team. stops and then the trill like a soloist here with this trill you should remember that something magic will happen something the most important in this whole story in the barcarolle here in this moment when <coughs> everything stopped after team number three um, we have like uh, maybe we have like uh, one voice is like a recitativo in the opera one voice but singing very strange melody so that's why it's a recitativo he's not singing he's saying expressing maybe expressing his love maybe saying um, very important things to her and uh, accompanying himself with the mandolin, a guitar or something uh, like this. Just listen to this and always we have still this waving, this waving motifs. Now accompaniment and then he's continuing. seductive melody a tempting melody a little like something like approaching the most important moment the famous dolce sfogato why famous this moment here is very famous in all history of music this is the first time when the composer used the word sfogato dolce sfogato which means sweet and well, sfogato means from Italian, it's very hard to really explain, but it is not really a musical term. It comes from the verb sfogare, which means to many things, but one of them is to realize our desire, to, to, to open, to, to fulfill our desire. And here is the true fulfillment of our desire. Some pianist, musicologists say this is the first kiss. For me, I think it's much more than the first kiss because what happened before, we already know. It, should, it is probably not the really first, but it can be also the first kiss. What is a fact is that this is the most magic, the most intimate, the most fascinating 
moment also to play because Chopin is provoking us pianists to caress to 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 touch the piano in the most erotic way we only we can imagine just to make it sound beautifully and this all will bring us to the climax to the real climax uh, which is very interesting <coughs> how is it built the climax because the climax starts with first team like uh, should be team number one but this team number one will bring us to this uh, even bigger climax when before we had piano pianissimo instead of crescendo this time we will have crescendo and then listen to this instead of team number two we have team number three so the team number three was the most important probably because here is the huge climax of team number three and after the team number three we will have the team number two so Chopin is changing them so I will play this whole thing for you now um, let's now enjoy and go deeply into this beautiful dolce sfogato piano that at the beginning we had this waving and now what Chopin is doing he is writing it in octaves so very powerful okay let's listen again to this magic moment I think we deserve oh, to this to have it again
last wave, very much up and very much down, bring us to Koda, to the end. <laughs> But before what we hear, listen. Do you remember? Shivers. Again. And now, this motif was very important. Now it ends with a beautiful uh, expression with beautiful description of the scene slowly closing just listen how beautifully the scene is closing sorry So this, this, I think, this, this big climax in the end is the answer of why these themes are so similar, because they are just put next one next to each other. If we listen to this um, in the whole, um, then these two, these three themes, they must be similar because they has to be, they, they are coming one inside another one and they are creating the whole unity when we have I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode and this fantastic piece of music. I personally love it. I enjoy performing it and uh, I play it for many, many years actually. I learned it first when I was just 19 years old. Then I left it for many years, then I came back to it and I every year I understand it more and more and more. Thank you very much 
and uh, see you again in my next episodes. Bye bye.